Um, we're going to look at a, a relatively small scale thermodynamics experiment today. This is one that I saw in the Journal of Chemical Education a number of years ago that I tried, and it was interesting, but the reaction involved is the reaction between sodium hypochlorite in the form of household bleach and acetone. The um, initial directions had you use straight acetone and household bleach. I tried exactly what they said in the, uh, in the article. I had a temperature change of something in excess of 40 degrees. I have a real problem. I did then, I do now, believing there's not going to be significant exchange of energy with the, uh, the surroundings in a case like that. I got to thinking about that. Bleach is mostly water. Acetone and water have an exothermic heat of solution. I had to be getting a fair percentage of energy just from the acetone and the water, aside from what was going on between the, uh, the ketone and the hypochlorite. So what I did was modify the procedure. I have a, um, the, the bleach is five and a quarter percent, but I have made my acetone solution 5% by volume, okay? In effect then, I've eliminated the heat of solution contribution. Then again, I wanted to do it small scale, and most of our chemistry lab calorimeters are coffee cup calorimeters. Well, we all know what happens if you put acetone <laughs> in a coffee cup. Not gonna work. But it turns out that if you take a paper towel, it, you may not have this kind of paper towels. Maybe you have the rolls or whatever. You need to experiment a little bit. If you happen to have these, most of the time, if you will take one towel around a 50 milliliter beaker, nest it in a 100 milliliter beaker, you'll get a nicely insulated calorimeter. To minimize exchange with the air, you need a lid. Now you can use your coffee cup, like that. Uh, this is, I believe, an eight ounce. Um, I use six ounce, it doesn't really matter. I do use a digital thermometer. I take the case off before I use it. And I don't have to drill a hole in this because this is a drill. There's my calorimeter. So, I'm going to take 20 milliliters of bleach, put the bleach in a beaker, Characteristic pale yellow color. I want 20 milliliters. God, that boy's good. That goes in my calorimeter. And what I'm going to do is add four milliliters of the acetone solution, which I'll put in here. My hands are going to be fairly busy, so I'll kind of explain what's going on and then do it. I need the initial temperature of the bleach, I'm reading 26.9 degrees Celsius. I'll record that. This is a five milliliter TD pipette. 
So what I'll do is bring the volume level up to one milliliter, then I can just drain it all. Okay. I'm going to lift the cover off, inject the uh, acetone. Put the lid back on. Swirl it a little bit to get mixing. You can do this with uh, interface temperature probes if you like. I kind of think the digital thermometer works well. 27.5, 27.6, What I'm looking for is the highest temperature the system reaches. Notice this is not a super fast reaction. Chemistry is pretty complex. 28.8. I'm up to 29.2, so I've already gotten a fairly significant temperature change. But I'm not getting a temperature change of 40 degrees. But I am up to 30. The temperature change for this system is fairly significant. I'm not doing the calculations, so I'm not going to worry about what the actual final temperature is. But already I'm at about 31 and a half. So this is a meaningful delta T as it is, 32.2. I'm going to stop there. What I wanted to do was illustrate a way to do a little bit different thermodynamic reaction, a way to handle uh, reagents that can't be in an acetone coffee cup calorimeter, or a coffee cup calorimeter, and um, maybe just something a little different than what you see every day. Good um, calorimetry problem, uh, one that works really well with my classes. I think it's a little bit more suitable for an honors level uh, than a beginning level, a lower level class. But um, it's effective and the results are really consistent. The oxidation of acetone by hypochlorite.